So I've been thinking and decided that it is time to take this project and make it a little bit more fun. One of the easiest ways to do this in anything is to add physics and more interactivity into the world. So we're gonna spend this video and a couple afterwards to take a look at forces. Uh, we're gonna start with impulse today. We're gonna to be looking at radial impulse and then we're gonna look at adding force as well because all of these can be kind of mixed up and confused by people. So I wanna go through their proper uses, how to implement them. And as with anything, they've got some little quirks in this engine, especially in newer versions. So this is a perfect time to recap on this topic. By the end of the next three videos, what we should have is something that looks like this. So we have the ability to add an impulse force to any physics objects that we fire at. We can add a radial impulse, so we can have things in a certain radius being pushed out as well. And then we're gonna add what is essentially a very small cube rocket to our game, like so, so that we can see how we can add forces. So to begin with this, I want to take a look at the most simple implementation, and that's just a simple impulse. So to do this, we're going to go to our character class. Before you open this, if you're still in the engine, we're gonna add a new input as well, in fact, so that we've got something to actually trigger this with. Uh, you could play around with things like the, um, the interact button that we already have, but I think what I want to do is keep these completely separate. So I'm gonna change the interact to be the E key or the F key or something like that, so that we can have the mouse as a fire button. So for this, we're gonna add a new action mapping I'm going to call this one fire and I'm going to assign this one the left mouse click. Okay, so a nice simple step, but that just gives us something to add in to the player character control so that we can assign that input. So if we open up Visual Studio and get the character class going. Over in Visual Studio, if we head over into the header file, uh, what we want to do is add a new function and some variables for the, uh, the force of the impulse. So I'm just going to place this at the bottom of our protected section that we have. Um, and I'm just going to leave a comment above this so that we know where we're adding in the new variables and functions because this is going to start getting a to be a bigger class now. Okay, so for the impulse, we only really need one thing here. Uh, this is going to be a float variable and this will be for the force of the impulse, so how hard we push against the physics actor. So I'm just going to call this one impulse force and I'm going to give this a U property. Now this only needs to be a really simple U property. Most of this is gonna be taken care of in the C++ code, uh, but I do want to make this editable on the character class so that we can easily change how much force uh, firing at something will do. So I'm just gonna make this edit anywhere. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just create another function and, and this is gonna be of type void. And I'm gonna call this one fire forward. So quite simply, uh, again, this doesn't need any U function or anything. This will all be handled in the C++ code. The way that I imagine this working is that we're gonna take some of the code we already have from our current trace forward and just re-implement this. Because like I said, I want to not affect the uh, interaction stuff. I wanna kind of keep that working in the project too. So I'm gonna come in here, I'll use my shortcut and I will give this the uh, declaration. And then with that done, we can close this and move over to the code file. So first thing is I want to navigate down to our player input component, and I want to add in the logic for the new input that we've just created. So I'm just gonna copy the previous one, the interact. I'm gonna change this to be fire. Remember, this is the name that we gave this in the editor. And I'm going to reassign this still in the character class, so that's fine. But instead of interact pressed, I want to reassign this to call fire forward. Okay, so we've now just, uh, bound this action to the fire forward function that we've just created. And that is just here. So what we want to do, like I said, I think we're just gonna take some of the details from our trace forward implementation. So we need the location, the rotation, and the hit information of what we're looking at. Um, so we're gonna need everything pretty much down to our Boolean here. So where we've stored the Boolean, we'll copy all of this and we'll paste this back in the fire forward. Now a lot of this, again, this could be something that would be much better as a type function. So a function returning a type of either Boolean or the hit results. Uh, and we could call that just to condense this. But again, I just want to get the specific topics being the focus. Um, we might come back and tidy this up at a later date. But now what we have is the fire forward function being called. And this is where we're gonna handle the logic for adding impulse to a physics object. Now, the difference between impulse or add impulse or add and the add force logic that we have is that impulse is meant to be a kind of a single fire function. So this is just going to be, if you hit something, imagine you, you've kicked an object. Uh, impulse is that initial 
effect that you'll have on the object as you start moving it. So it's not going to keep happening or being added on after that. It's just going to be that initial knock which will send it flying. That's the impulse. Now force is something more like a thruster. So like I said, we're going to make a kind of cube based rocket um, and that force is going to be adding velocity to that object over time and usually gets called on something like tick rather than just that initial hit. Okay, so to add the impulse, what we want to do is we have our B is hit. So we still want to do a check on this. So we'll say if B hit. So we still want to make sure that we've hit an object. We then want to get the mesh component that we've hit. So we're going to say use static mesh component. Uh, we'll call this one mesh comp. And we're just going to have to cast this to the use static mesh component type. And to and what we're checking is the hit dot get actor. So we're still getting all of our hit results up here. So we're going to say hit dot get actor. And then inside of this, we can call a function which is the get root component. Okay, so we've now got the static mesh that we've hit. So we want to say if mesh comp. So just checking that the mesh actually does exist on this object. Then we want to do two things. Now the first thing is that we want to actually store a variable. Uh, but I'll show why that variable needs to be stored in a moment. So what we want is to call the add impulse function on the mesh. So we'll say mesh comp uh, add impulse. Now the first thing that this needs is a vector, which is the direction of the impulse. So this is why we want to store a variable as well. So we're going to create a new variable, which will be our f vector. And I'm going to call this one camera forward. And this is quite simply going to be our camera comp, which is, remember, something we've created already on our character class. So we have that here. And we simply want to get its forward vector. OK, so this is the way that the camera is facing. So we're going to add impulse in that direction. So that's kind of to show that we're get, getting kind of a knockback effect on the object. So with that stored, we can now say the camera forward vector will be our first argument. Um, and in fact, that's our only argument. So what we want to do is with our direction. Uh, we do have some other arguments, but we can ignore the bone name uh, and we can ignore the velocity change as well. For now, what we can do is just add the force to this. So we've already got our variables. So we want to multiply this by our impulse force. That's why we created that earlier. And we also, because the uh, object is going to be itself taken into account, we want to get the mass of the object. This is also going to allow us to keep our force fairly reasonable otherwise we're going to be in the tens or hundreds of thousands just to get this moving so we can say mesh comp get mass okay so we're going to get the forward direction we're going to multiply that by the impulse force multiplied by the mass uh, and that is going to be how we move this now we should probably go up to the constructor as well and just give the impulse force a base value just so that we don't forget this so i'm going to say impulse force equals something like 500 and that way if we ever forget to update this in the uh, the player class or the character class, we're not going to wonder why the objects are not moving. So with all of that done though, if we hit compile, that is pretty much us ready to go and start playing around with some physics actors. Okay, so I'm still waiting for my compile to happen. I don't think I've opened this project for a while, so it's taking a little bit longer. Uh, now what I want to do though is, whilst I'm waiting for this, we're just going to come back over and create our physics actor. So we have some interactables already, so I'm just going to move these around so they're kind of out of the way to begin with. Really though, all our physics actor is going to be is I'm going to drag in another cube. Uh, we'll place this on the floor and I'm going to come and scroll down to the physics. We want to simulate physics here. It already kind of works out the mass that the object should be. So that's fine. That's going to, like I said, going to be taken into account when we're applying this force. And I'm going to create a few of these just so that we can play about with several different objects. And also this is going to be quite cool to look at when we create the radial impulse in the next video. Uh, because we can have all of these flying around together. So we can come in and just make sure that this is going to work by maybe leaving a few in the air to make sure that they're definitely going to drop to the ground, that they have collision and everything like that. So there we go. We have some physics actors now in the level ready to go. Uh, we can push them around. And we're going to play about with this in a moment as soon as this is compiled. The other thing as well, I wasn't completely paying attention, uh, but we want to make sure that these are movable. And I can't remember if these started as static and it updated it automatically when I made this a physics actor. But if this isn't set to be movable, then we're going to get compile errors. Um, no, we're going to get warning errors just saying that we can't apply impulse to a static object because it's not allowed to move around. So most of these things in the level should, the other things should be static just because this is going to be better for performance. If you know that something isn't going to move, then we can make it static. It'll bake things into the lighting and it just makes it more performant. But for the physics, we want to make sure that this is movable. 
Okay, so just quickly back into Visual Studio. So that build all went through successfully. I seem to have spelled everything correctly the first time. So we can head straight back to the project and we can test this now. So if we come in, I think I just hit it there when I clicked into the window, but we can see we can add small amounts of force when I click to these cubes. Uh, like I've mentioned, we've made this easily editable so we can come into the character class. We can go down to our impulse force. Uh, let's make this something more interesting like 2000 and we should see a much bigger impact being made here. And these are all being shot in the direction that we're firing them. So we can play and get rid of the cubes and do whatever we want with those. So again, quite a simple thing. And we can see here that I'm making some warnings appear, telling me that certain things are not set to be movable, but we're trying to add impulse to them. So we can actually fix that quite quickly. That's something I wanted to go over anyway. So that's happening because we're shooting things like these blocks. You can see it happening in the background there and the floor because they're not movable we can't add impulse we don't want this happening so if we go back over to visual studio one more time for today all we want to do is we're going to go back down to our new fire function and we're going to encase this check in another simple if check just to make sure that the thing that we're hitting is a valid object to have physics applied so what we what we want is if we've hit something we want to also check uh, if hit dot get actor uh, is root component movable so calling this function returns a boolean. Uh, we're just going to make sure that that boolean is true so that the thing that we're hitting is definitely movable. And then if it is, we can just drop all of the logic that we had previously into this if statement so that now if we recompile this, we're only going to get the add impulse fire to work on things which actually will be movable anyway. And that should stop the warning message from happening. Okay, so once again, that will compile successfully just to make sure that we can see this. So I've got the build succeeded. Uh, we can go back into the project. And if we hit the cubes again, we can get these flying away. Now, if we hit the floor or the decoration cubes, you can see that we're not getting any warnings appearing down here because it's bailing out before we try and add impulse to something which isn't going to move. So that's, like I said, to solve that issue as well. So that was probably one of the easiest ones to implement out of the three topics we'll be looking at in this kind of small section of functionalities in C++. So I wanted to approach that one first of all so that we could get things like the input done as well, uh, the new function, everything like that. So I'll leave that one here for today. As always, if you enjoyed these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.